to start by saying that in this particular season, this particular uh, day and hour in which we, we are now living, uh, there is a lot of confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. We, we got people that are confused. There, there's a lot of deception. There's a lot of wickedness. Hypocrisy. There is a lot of demonic strategies and plans to overtake the people of God. Amen. Amen. That's why it's so important that we, the people of God, Amen. Any, any people of God here? Amen. I'm not ashamed to be a child of God. I'm not ashamed yes. to be a one God, Jesus name, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, aisle running, shouting, yes. apostolic Amen. 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 We need to be sensitive. Amen. Amen. We need to be very sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God. God start moving, we need to move in the direction he's moving in. Amen. You might miss your miracle, your breakthrough, an opportunity that you might never have again. So we got to be sensitive to the spirit of God, particularly if we want to avoid being confused. We got to be sensitive. We don't want to be misled and overtaken by all the demonic things that are happening in our world today. But in the midst of all of this, I, I want you to know, I really want you to know, and I want this to settle in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. I want you to know that God, God actually desires to lead you, to guide you more than you desire that he leads you. Amen. And so it's, it's our responsibility, church, to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God. Amen. Give us a sensitivity, God, to what you're doing. Yes. A sensitivity, God, if, you, if you're leading me this way, yes. that's the way I want to go. I may not understand, but if that's you leading me, wherever you lead, I will follow. Amen. If you're leading me to stand still, I, I, I just will stand still, God. Amen. If you say step back, I'll step back. Amen. If you say turn left, I'll turn left. Just help me to be sensitive. Too many people today are being desensitized to the Spirit of God. To the point they don't even know when he's moving. I don't ever want to be that individual. Ah. That I cannot sense and feel God moving or speaking to me. Amen. Amen. I know what I'm about to say more on a, a different aspect might uh, probably, it's probably before some of our time. Amen. Some of our young people, I know it's before their time. Amen. But how many of you uh, can remember growing up as a child? Playing the guy, the, the children's game, follow the leader. Yeah. I know these young people, they don't know nothing about it. And it's Xbox, PlayStation. You know. But when I was growing up, we played follow the leader. Yeah. Amen. Had fun playing it too. Yeah. Amen. Stayed up all night if we could play until the streetlights came on. You know, street lights came on. You wasn't in the house. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a different story. But in the game, follow the leader. Players would choose a leader or uh, someone to be head of the line. And all the remaining players, the followers, would all line up behind the leader. You, you know if you ever played it. And the leader would then move around. And all the, the players had to mimic the leader. And his words or her words or his actions or her actions. But any player who failed to follow or mimic the leader would be out of the game. You may, when only one follower remained in the game, that player then became the new leader. 
and the game began anew with all the other players joining again, but being followers. What's interesting, I, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but the purpose of the game followed the leader. There was a purpose in that game. And the purpose was really, it, it, it was really created, the purpose was to help sharpen the child's ability to hear the leader's voice. To listen to the leader's instruction and to obey the leader's request. And some of us, I remember having fun playing follow the leader. Oh, yes. Amen. And I don't know about you, it was a good time. You could go outside and play. Amen. Amen. You got to kick them out and go outside and play. Um, basketball rims and baseballs and golf clubs. And you know, we just stay at the house and play the video games. But uh, how many old enough to remember, though, about uh, 1979? Amen. The vintage Super Simon Milton Bradley Electronic Follow the Leader game. I mean, remember that. Yes, sir. I, I mean, remember when, what, what do you want for Christmas? Simon, 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 Simon. Amen. Anybody old enough to remember that? Amen. Amen. All right, bro. Y'all were still playing jacks. Playing with, uh, oh, y'all have baby dolls. Who's God? That, that's what we used to play back in the day. We play it all day. If you can. Amen. Some of y'all are like, wow, I'm glad we've advanced. <laughs> but I had fun playing that. Amen. And then when the people in the neighborhood found out that you had more toys than they had, everybody wanted to come over your house. Amen. Play the games. I got smart as a young person. I, I began to charge them. To play guitar. You mean? You mean? I knew they couldn't go to the video game store. I, mean, I know we, I know they didn't have enough money to go skating because they didn't go to the skating ring. We could play the video games, and so I knew they would come over because I had Atari. I, I charged them to play centipede, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Donkey Kong. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I'm going to focus your attention on the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, where uh, the Apostle Paul, let's all stand, uh, is talking to us about following the leadership of the Spirit of God. I want to direct your attention to Romans, the 8th chapter, in verse 13. Paul, in these two verses of scripture, he is speaking to the people of God, the church at Rome, to the saints. And he says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deed of the body, ye shall live. Mm, I felt the Holy Ghost in here. Let, let me read that again. For if ye live, how, how are you living? Are you living out of the flesh? Notice what Paul says, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. In verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Father, we thank you today. I just want to move out of the way, God, that your Spirit, God, can move. I pray you anoint my mind, Lord, anoint my lips of clay. I pray that, God, you would speak to everyone here under the sound of my voice, God. I give you the glory, I give you the honor, I give you the praise. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. I want to preach for just a moment, and, and my subject today is on this thought, follow the leading of the Spirit of God. Follow the leading 
of the Spirit of God. Now, it is a known fact, if you do not know this, that all of the apostolic writings of the New Testament that were written by the apostles, the original translations of the New Testament were written in ancient Greek, which also now we have translated in English. Other countries have the Bible translated in their translation. And I'm grateful that the Bible is in many various translations that people can read the word of God. But the original New Testament was written in the ancient Greek. Also, it's important to know that in ancient Greek grammar, the language or words were written in VSO pattern. And what I mean by that, in, in ancient Greek, the language was written in verb, subject, and object order. Just as we see written here in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, which says, notice, for as many as are led, verb, by the Spirit of God, subject. They are the sons of God, object. But what's interesting to note is that in the grammar of modern Greek, the predominant word order in Greek sentences in modern Greek follows the SVO pattern, which is the subject, verb, and object pattern. And also in modern Greek, the sentence structure is actually reversed so that it reads as follows. For as many as by the Spirit of God, subject, are led, verb, they are the sons of God, object. And as we see in the grammar of modern Greek, the language here puts the spirit of God at the beginning of the verse. And we are placed behind him, which is a picture of our responsibility as people of God to follow the lead of the spirit of God. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. Mm. Amen. Amen. And so I also want to bring your attention to another important point, which is this Greek word for lead. This Greek word for lead in Romans 8.14 is translated from Strong's Greek lexicon G71. I go. It is spelled A. G O. But this Greek word ago simply means to lead. This word ago in the Greek is also the root word for the Greek word ago, which according to Strong's Greek lexicon seven, uh, excuse me, G73, ago describes an intense conflict such as an intense struggle of a wrestler in a wrestling match as he fights with another opponent. And each one is fighting intensely to throw the other to the ground in defeat. This word, agon, it also just depicts a struggle of the human will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus. You see, this is why the Apostle Paul brings out in Romans chapter 8 that the Spirit of God wants to help us. Amen. Mm -hmm. I said, God wants to help you. God wants to lead you. But often, there is a struggle. Mm -hmm. Often, there is a wrestling 
between our flesh, Jesus. our will, and the spirit of God. Amen. That's why Paul said, the good that I would, I do not. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and the stuff I don't want to do, I find myself doing it. Amen. He brought out, oh, wretched man that I am. It's the sin that's within me. There's a struggle going on. Amen. And you got to understand it. It's like this. The Spirit of God leads one direction. I said the Spirit of God will lead you in a certain direction. I feel the Holy Ghost. God trying to lead some of you. God trying to direct some of you. Yes, sir. Amen. I, I said God trying to talk to some of you. Amen. He trying to give you direction for your life. Amen. He's trying to help you and make sure that you are in the right place at the right time. Amen. But we've got to overcome the flesh in order to follow the leading of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help somebody to understand that although the Spirit of God wants to lead you, I say, the, the, say, say, tell you something. The Spirit of God wants to lead me. Yes, God wants to lead me. Amen. God wants to lead you. Yeah. It, it wasn't you that just come on your own doing today. God led you here today. Amen. 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 He's trying to lead people. Yeah. He's trying to lead you. Amen. Yes. But your human will, your flesh, doesn't like the ideal of being led. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's right. Your flesh, my flesh at times don't like the idea right. of somebody giving us some guidance. Mm -hmm. I, I said the flesh don't like the idea of being instructed by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. The flesh don't even like the idea of a person in the position of authority to give us some advice. Amen. That's right, our human nature and the flesh wants to call the shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Your flesh want to call the shots. Lead the way all the time. But you cannot be productive as a child of God letting your flesh call the shots all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Whether young or old, most people don't like the idea of being led. No. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 It is the nature of the flesh yeah. to want to go its own way. Yeah. It's the nature of the flesh to do its own thing. Mm -hmm. God is trying to lead you and guide you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So he can change your life. Yes. Help you to get on track because because you've been trying to call the shots all the time, that's why your life messed up the way it is right now. Right. 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 Well, I said, I'm trying to help you get in the right place at the right time so I can bless you the way I want to bless you. I'm trying to lead you so I can open the door that I want you to walk through. Right. I'm trying to lead you so I can get you to meet the people I want you to meet. Because they have what you need. Yeah. Hallelujah. This so diabolical world we live in, got people thinking I can live the way I want to live, do what I want to do, call the shots in my life, and still be right with God. I'm here to bust your bubble. You cannot do what you want to do, go where you want to go, live how you want to live, and say you being led of the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 You're going to be led by the Spirit. Right. Amen. You're going to be led like Adam to find an Eve in your life. Uh -huh. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. If you're being led by the Spirit, He ain't going to lead you as a male to be with another male. Okay. Jesus. 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 Thank you, sweetheart. Amen. You be led by the Spirit of God. Amen, young ladies. He's going to lead you one day to 
should be with a man. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 You can be quiet all you want. Amen. Amen. You get mad all you want. Amen. Amen. You, you, got, you and I got to be led by the Spirit of God. He's trying to take his church and his people places. But we can't get where God's trying to take us. We're trying to call the shots all the time. Like we the big dog. No, 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 no. God said, get out of my way. Mm. If you don't get out of my way, I'll move you out. If you don't follow my leading and do what I want you to do, I'll find somebody else that'll listen to my voice. I'll raise up somebody else that'll say, here I am, my Lord. Here's, here I am, Lord. Use me. Mm -hmm. I'll find somebody else. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. It's the nature of the flesh. This is why we got to choose. Choose. I can't choose for you. No, you can't choose for me. Right. We got to choose to walk in the spirit. Amen. And let the spirit of God dictate and lead our lives. Right. Amen. 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 Yeah, let, me, let me say something. It is not our job to decide for the Lord how he must lead us. It's not your job. It's not my job to decide for God how he's going to lead me. No, that's his job. Wherever you lead, I'll follow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You got to understand when you receive the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God's leadership over your life creates a struggle with your whole, your human will and your flesh. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You ever notice after you got the Holy Ghost, it seemed like there was a big struggle now. Right. Amen. Amen. That old man, that old flesh wanted to do a certain thing. Right. But the Spirit of God was saying, I'm not leading you to do that no more. Right. Uh, flesh said, I, I want to go back to the club. Yeah. The Spirit of God said, no, you don't need the club no more. Yeah. Right. You, you need the house of God, the people of God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amen. On, it's not your job. Uh, I feel all of you know, somebody, stop trying to decide for God. How to lead your life. Hey. Don't try to take his role and decide what he's to do with your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's a problem right now in our house. People are leading their own life, doing their own thing, and then they want to solidify it as if it's a God. I said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Right. I never told you to do that. Right. I never told you to go there. Right. I never told you to date that person. Right. 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 Folk are dating people that are not even in the will of God because they just simply lonely. Right. Come on, come on. Come on, Pastor. Sisters, can I tell you something? You need to understand that God is the husband and love of your soul. And don't allow your flesh to lead you into a relationship that is not of God. That's right. That's right. Brothers. 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 Men. Don't let your flesh lead you. To date a woman that is not in the will of God for your life. If she ain't saved, if he not saved, God is not leading you to be out with them at night. God is not leading you to be over at their house at night. God is not leading you to be up in that bed with them. You see, you ain't gonna get no 
spiritual freedom we up in here. I'm not trying to produce gir spiritual Gerby ba Gerber babies. The, the spirit of the Lord ain't, ain't, ain't lead you to unbutton your, your pants. The Spirit of the Lord ain't telling you to take that belt off. The Spirit of the Lord ain't telling you to drop them drawers. The Spirit of the Lord ain't telling you to take off your clothes. I'm still talking about the relation. I'm talking about summertime. I'm going to get to that too. Thank you for saying that. That's good. I'm in the book. Teacher. Right. Hey, you want Kool-Aid, you go somewhere else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Spirit of God got to lead us. Right. When I found my wife, the Lord was leading me. Right. And when she found me, the Lord was leading her. Right. Amen. 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 You, you better stop trying to decide for God how to lead your life. That's right. God is the one who's to lead you and guide you. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, there's going to be a struggle. Because that old nature going to want to do the old stuff you used to do. Mm. Mm. The, the, the Holy Ghost ain't leading you to pick up no pornography. No. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost ain't leading you. They have no boyfriend on the side. No, that's right. That's right. Holy Ghost ain't leading you have no girlfriend on the side. That's right. Holy Ghost ain't leading you to rob God. Take all the earned money you making and don't give nothing to God. The Holy Ghost ain't leading you to do that. Holy Ghost ain't leading you to do that. The Holy Ghost ain't leading you. And you, you be standing up. I want to thank God He gave me this job. I want to give all the honor and glory to God. <laughs> the Lord ain't leave, and you know, and, and I ain't got to. I'm not, I'm not hating on this person, but you know, I just got to say this. You know, I got, a, I got no bone to pick with Patrick Mahomes. Won't want to stand on the platform. God, God, I, I, God, ain't gave me this platform. God and gave me this platform. I'm going to use this platform, but use in profanity. God and gave me this platform and then win the Super Bowl and drunk as a skunk with a trophy. God gave me this. God didn't give nobody the platform to get drunk. That's right. That's good, man. Yeah, God and gave me this platform. No. 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 I ain't hating on you. Right. To honor, to, to where honors do. That's right. But we we want to put God in everything. Right, right. Like He leading us. Right. Amen. 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 As a child of God, you right. see some of you raising hands. You was a child of God. Amen. We got to learn. I said we got to learn to subdue, to come. And overpower the complaints of our flesh so we can stay in our place. You say, where, where is I got to, you got to, you see, some of you are not in place. You got to, you got to subdue your flesh so you can stay in your place. And that's behind the direction of the spirit of God. Amen. We ain't to be out front directing the spirit of God. And modern Greek, you notice it switched and reversed to put God first. We be behind him. Amen. Behind him. Why? So we can follow his leading. Follow his direction and his guidance for our life. You see the mark of a mature believer is a person's ability, his or her ability to sense where the spirit of God is leading him or her. Him or her. You, you know you're growing when you can begin to sense where the spirit of God is leading you. Mm -hmm. yep. But also 
to follow the leading. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's when you know you grew. Amen. When you know he did it. Yeah. And you sense it, you realize it, and you quit quenching the spirit and quit trying to dictate to God what he's supposed to do. And you follow what he's trying to do in your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Makes me forget years ago, my, my former pastor years ago. Remember, he said he was driving him and his wife down the road. And as they were driving, the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, Stop. Stop. We're driving at night. Stop. You don't drive out of here. But they obey God. And stopped. He said, Well, what if you said stop, God, I'm going to stop. Get out of the car and see what the reason is why you said stop. And he said, When he stopped the car and they got out of the car, all of a sudden, they heard this roaring, massive water. Just, just water. Just, you know, understand? Kept walking a little bit further. Come to find out, the road, the bridge had collapsed. And if they would have kept driving, their car would have went over into the river. And they would have been killed. But God said, stop. Stop. I feel all like, God, God, God tell somebody right now, stop. Yeah. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop. Yes, sir. But you're going you to keep on doing it. And you don't realize where you might be taking your life. Amen? Amen. Well, what, what is he saying stop doing in your life right now? Well, where is he saying stop going? Go, going right now. Yeah. Are you going places and God says stop going there? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and the mere fact that this, this, this Greek word for lead comes from this Greek word agon, again, which depicts this intense struggle in conflict with the human will. This is the reason why Paul tells us that we have to deal with our human will. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have to, as Paul said, mortify our flesh particularly as you begin to rely on the spirit of God as your helper and as your guide you got to deal with your flesh because your flesh will interfere with God leading and guiding your life amen amen, amen. amen. We, we, we got to start listening to the spirit of God See, it's hard for some people to hear what the Spirit is saying because you got too many voices speaking into your life. Mm -hmm. you, you got all these things you're looking at on Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever it's called. You got all this stuff speaking into your spirit. Then you got all these ungenerated minds of people that don't want to have nothing to do with God speaking into your spirit, telling you what you're supposed to do. And you ain't even tried the spirit by the spirit to see whether it be of God. Amen. 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 So Paul said, we, you, we, we got to deal with our flesh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Notice what he said, Romans 8, 13. For if ye live after the flesh, you shall die. He, he talking about a spiritual death. Yeah. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall Leave. Romans 8.13 in the Amplified says it this way. In the Amplified translation it says this. For if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh you are going to die. See, see some of us are driven by every little impulse of what the flesh say do. Mm. Every little impulse your flesh tell you do something you do it. But we got to get victory over the impulses of the flesh. But he goes on to say, but if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
You are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body. You will really live forever. We must know. That our flesh wants control. The flesh won't control of your life. Therefore, you have to learn to say no to your flesh. You, you got to let flesh know, flesh, you're not in charge no more. Yes. The Holy Ghost now lives inside of me. Yes. Yes, sir. And, and I know I've gotten weak in the spirit because I ain't read my Bible. I haven't been coming to church. I haven't been praying. I haven't been fasting. But, but, but the devil know this. I got enough sense to know that, that, that God is inside of me. And I need to repent of where I am right now. I need to get myself in alignment with God and his word so he can work in my life. So I'm saying no. So you can't say no to people. You can't say no to people. Ring. What you doing? Get ready. You on your way to church. I ain't doing nothing. You want to go? It's, it's, you want to go down to uh, Hooters tonight? <laughs> What's up, bro? What's, what, you, what you got going on? You be thinking, man, why that answer? <laughs> I'm getting ready to hang out, bro. You know? You want to go down to Cabaret tonight? You want to go down to Cabaret? If I get some comments and then get some amen, you maybe know about the Cabaret. You say, well, how do you know, Pat? Well, I work down there. And that I go there, I ain't trying to go there. We got, we got, we got people. God be going in the cabaret. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. That old, that old friend, he'll call you, bro. You, you want to go to the club? It's, it's, it's a special pole night. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you better, you, some of you better start learning to say no to your flesh. You better get enough Holy Ghost to look that person in the eye and say, no, I can't go with you. No, I can't do this. Because it violates my conscience. It violates the word of God. I can't do it. Amen. 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 Give everybody your number. No. That's the truth. Boy, there, there's a flirtatious spirit out there today. Yep. Flirtatious spirit. Yes. It ain't just a man now. Right. I know we got some flirtatious men. Right. Them women out there. Oh, yeah. yes. Flirtatious. Oh, yeah. I'm buying my own business the other day. Minding <laughs> 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 my own business. <laughs> Lady came up to me and said, Excuse me. I'm going to just get to the point be very bold. Are you single? Okay. Uh -oh. I said, no. I've been married happily for 31 years. Amen, glory. Oh, she was like, oh, my heart. You can get drunk for all I care. There's a flirtatious spirit out here. I'm not moving. But you gotta walk in the spirit. And it, 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 it didn't even question what I was going to answer. Some brothers said they come up, oh my boy. <laughs> Depending on what I answer. Uh -huh. 
We we get we better start letting the spirit thought lead us. Amen. I remember one time when my wife was working close to me, close to me. She had Starbucks. She even came up and said, I'll pay for the whole order. Ain't done no six dollar coffee. It was over a fifty dollar order, wasn't it? Came and said, I'll pay for your whole order. You know, like she goes, Oh, you made for my fifty dollar order. Can I give you my number? <laughs> she said, thank you. <laughs> so her stuff and went on. <laughs> I mean, he already went up to the counter and paid for it. <laughs> Man, she probably said, like, Fred, big dummy. <laughs> What is leading you? Who and what is leading you? Is it all your blue friends in school? Yeah. Who and what is leading you? Is that that person that after you got saved, that it was the one no person you didn't cut ties with? Is this the backup plan? Because I know I had. An ideal, now it's an ordeal. Now I'm looking for a new deal. So that one back up, I'm keeping it close. Oh, no. Who leading you? What's leading you? Jesus. You're not gonna walk into the will of God leading yourself, dictating to God what he's supposed to be doing in your life. Amen. Jonah tried that with God. God said, I got your number. I ain't got a paid cruise for you. And it's not going to be comfortable. Could it be we are in some uncomfortable conditions and situations because we have not listened to the leading and the voice of the Spirit of God. And now he's rocking your world. Regardless how great the struggle of the human will seems at times, this process of trusting and following the leadership of the Spirit of God in your life is the only way to live a supernatural and victorious Christian life. You want to live a supernatural, spirit-filled life? There is no way around. You have to deal with your flesh. Lost the problem? Deal with it. That's right. And the Spirit of God will lead you and guide you. Amen. Let's want to control you. You gotta mortify the flesh. Let me share this. As it relates to the leading of the Spirit of God, I feel to say this. As it relates to the leading of the Spirit of God in your life. His leading often is subtle. Often his leading will take the form of an impression. That's true. Or the nudging of your heart. Yep. Yep. To do something in your life that is in alignment and accordance with the word of God. Not contrary. Also, the leading of the Spirit of God at times can be more dramatic, such as through prophecy, (coughs) tongues and interpretation, dreams, or visions from God. His leading simply can come through the voice of the God called man of God in your life. That's why nobody don't want to commit to church nowadays. Because they don't want no man of God speaking in their life. Amen. Amen. But he will speak through the man of God. As he speaks in direction by the spirit of God according to the word of God. Amen. Amen. 
and it will be clear and direct to your spirit. Yeah. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. But the litmus test to visions and voices and prophecies and revelations is the word of God. Yeah. The Bible. Yeah. Anything that contradicts the Bible when well understood cannot be of the spirit of God. For the spirit of God is inspired by the Bible. And so if it contradicts the Bible, the word of God, I don't care how well understood. If it contradicts the word, the spirit of God ain't leading you to do it. There's a way that seems right to a man. But the ends thereof are the ways of Amen. 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 We, we got to learn. Can I, I want to encourage you. Do you know you can, you can submit and yield and you can learn to know the voice of God. Amen. You can know how to be led by him. Stop being led by everybody else. Let the spirit of God lead you. Let family lead you. Yeah, I don't don't misunderstand. Why. Love family. Right, man. Honor family. Yeah, man. Respect family. Yeah. But family ain't leading me. Right, man. Particularly if family don't want to live for God. That's right. If they don't want to live for God, right. don't come visit you. Well, if you're gonna stay at my house. Right. <laughs> You going to church. That's right. You can drive all the way down here if you want. <laughs> but you need to know up front. Absolutely. Yeah. Unless you sick and can't get up. Right. You going to church. Showing up. Some people, damn it, they ain't going to church. Well, since you ain't going, I ain't going with you. I ain't going either. <laughs> What? <laughs> Feel the Holy Ghost. And now let me just say something else. We got to learn to know the Spirit of God. And being led by the Spirit, it should be the primary top concern and your your, your our, our lifelong pursuit as growing children of God. And I want you to notice this too. Notice Romans 8.13. I'm not watching. Notice Paul did not say as many as go to church. These are the sons of God. Notice he didn't say as many as read their Bibles. They are the sons of God. He didn't even say as many take communion. These are the sons of God. He didn't even say as many as a position and a title. And being used. Amen. Well known all around the world. These are the sons of God. He didn't even say. And, 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 and you know reading the Bible is important. Yeah. Communion is important. You know, letting God use you. And position you. And let him do what he needs to do in your life. And he, he gives you a place to have influence. That's okay. But you notice he didn't also say. That as many as give to the poor. And feed the hungry. And I'm not knocking that. that that's, that's, that's a part of, you know, reaching people. But that don't mean you led of the spirit. That's right. Because I'm feeding hungry people. Right. right. Amen. 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 Boy, you can hear a mouse walk up in here right now. <laughs> but I'm trying to help us. Yeah. Everybody want to be, I want to be used of God. I want God to use me. I want to do something in the church. But how can you be used? How can God use you and do something in your life when you dictate to God what he's supposed to do in your life? What's leading you? Who's leading? He didn't say as many give and tie an offering. These are the sons of God. But in this text, the test of sonship 
is whether or not a person is being led by the Spirit of God. It don't even have to do with if, if people talk in tongues. That might be a manifestation, manifestation you got the Holy Ghost, but is the Holy Ghost leading you? Because if the Holy Ghost is leading you, you ain't going to run around treating folk like a dog. No, that's right. Right. You ain't going to go around hating people and being full of unforgiveness. We got a lot of tongue-talking people that's not being led by the Spirit of God. Many are called, few are chosen. God said, I'm trying to choose you now to let me lead your life. Amen. Amen. So how did the Spirit of God lead us? We're led by his guidance. We're led by him drawing us. We're led by governing authority in our life. We're led by cooperating with his leading. Stop letting the world lead you how you ought to live your life. Why don't lead me how I did, I'm, I'm to dress? That's right. 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 Why are they leading me how to conduct myself? The Spirit of God leads me. That's right. Say, don't drag, just droopy pants. No, no, he won't leave me. They dress like that. Well, they lead me. You got me nowadays in the church. You got Pentecostal pimps. <laughs> Players in the church. <laughs> Who up in churches like that? Get this sister's number on Sunday, Wednesday Bible study, get another sister's number. Uh, <laughs> Told this sister on Sunday, the Lord led me to you. Tell the other sister on Wednesday, the Lord led me to you. <laughs> Pentecostal pimps. Players. And then you get some coming, I don't know what they are. <laughs> What's leading? Who lead? Amen. Ladies, the world don't lead you how to be a lady. That's right. That's right. Who leading you? You need to be as a lady looking to godly women in the church to lead you. That's right. Men, you need to be looking up to godly men to lead you. It, it, you know, it, and, and I'm just, I'm saying this humanly, but I feel like there's some truth in it. If you leave and you get mad at me, I'm so glad I got somebody that I can give me a kiss and say, baby, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and a son and a daughter-in-law that pat me on the back and say, dad, I'm not good, we, we love you, we support you. That's right. Amen. 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 We support you. Amen. And I got, I know, I know, I know I got a whole lot of you. Yeah. Yeah. I know I got we no. are trying to, I'm not going to ask the ground with nobody. We're trying to help you. Just because you look at the mall and, and you know, everything tight on the mannequin don't mean it got to be tight on you. That's right. That's right. Right. My wife bought me, me some slacks today. Praise God. I said, man, these are too tight right here. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, you might, we can get a jacket and look at it. I like the slacks now. Yeah, you're right. I ain't up into them little tight straight legs now. I, <laughs> I got to get up out of them. I got to get up out of them. <laughs> but this ain't got me all tight. Right, man. Right. <laughs> well, I got me all tight. <laughs> Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wait, what are you trying to let somebody see something? 
And God forbid if you would get in the flesh and it's so tight. Jesus. I'll leave it at that. Right, right, right. What are you trying to show? It's good. I think my wife is trying to go out there like, she'd be like, I ain't wear this. See, baby, how this look on me? I'd be like, well, that look good, baby. She's I think it look too tight. I can't wear this. I can't wear this. I'm not, you looking at my backside. I'm just being real. But all everybody else saying, but nowadays. (laughs) (laughs) Can I make, am I, am I, You talk, that's what I'm saying. Who leading? What's leading you? Where does the Spirit of God lead us? I'll tell you where he he leads us sometimes to repentance. Sometimes he'll simply lead you to the watery grave of baptism. For the remission of sins. Hallelujah. And then I'm, I'm about done. He leads you to receiving the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. He, he will lead you to think little of yourself and much of Him. Yes. He'll lead you to come to church. Yes. To worship Him and to praise Him. He'll lead you into truth. He'll lead you into love. Lead you into holiness. And he will ultimately lead you into usefulness in the kingdom. So I I, I close. I want you to see. I I got one important question I'm going to close with. And I've alluded to it somewhere, somewhat all over. The question I close with for us to ask ourselves where and what is the Spirit of God trying to lead you to do in your life? What is God trying to lead you to do? And what is He trying to lead you to change in your life? He's trying to lead his church. But the question is, will we follow? But I feel today, I, I know I, I can feel some of your spirit. You, you want God to lead you. And, and so we're going to open the altar. Because I know that everyone in this house has been hearing, whether subtle, whether audible, with a nudging impressions upon the heart. The question is, will you let him lead you?